Morgan of SunWest Mortgage is here to change the world of loan originations forever. From sending updates to your clients to allowing you more time, you can do it all in a simple chat. You no longer have to struggle with documents. All you need to do is select the files and upload them and they're submitted in an instant along with your loan file. With SunWest, your true home is always within. Welcome to The Interest, I'm Katie Jensen. We're about to tie the bow on the year and move into 2023. Throughout the month, we're going to talk with experts about what they think the next 12 months has in store. First up is the Mortgage Bankers Association, which earlier this week revised its forecast for next year. And once again, MBA's economists lowered their expectations. Our own Mike Savino talked with one of those economists. I think, again, there is sort of that let's wait and see uh, how things clear up. Mortgage rates have been sliding back down and buyers remain confused about where things are headed. That's setting up for a sluggish end to a year that's been underperforming since the spring. But starting in March or April of this year, we saw mortgage rates start to, I don't even, I can't even say inch up, right? They just start to kind of to, to increase in chunks. The Mortgage Bankers Association thinks that sluggish housing market will continue into next year. In fact, just this week, the MBA again lowered its expectations for the housing market for next year to $1.98 trillion. That would be a drop of about 22% from the origination this year. So we are expecting more of an economic slowdown in 2023. The MBA points to a number of factors, including concerns about the economy. Low inventory means appreciation may level off, but home prices aren't coming down. But what's the biggest factor? But I think that in, in, the, in sort of the near term, there's, there's the impact of, of higher rates. Consumers' purchasing power is limited right now. The MBA does expect rates to continue coming down, and the housing market won't come to a standstill because buyers are waiting for their chance. Have a lot of younger home buyers or first time home buyers looking to enter the market. But it will still take a long time for inventory to recover. Home buyers need to be ready to act if they see the home they love and the rate they can afford. Originators can help by getting borrowers to that point. So, so it's important, I think, for, for lenders. Uh, to work with the bar to, you know, to, to, to make sure, I guess, they have their ducks in a row. And the market will eventually turn around. The NBA sees light at the end of the tunnel for originators who can grind out the next year. You know, I think 24 and 25, you know, you'll see a bit more meaningful recovery in terms of purchase originations. You can hear more from NBA Deputy Chief Economist Joel Kahn on The Principal, the Mortgage News Network's daily podcast, available wherever you get your podcasts. For The Mortgage News Network, I'm Mike Savino. Thanks, Mike. Meanwhile, two reports from Redfin show us that buyers and sellers are having different reactions to the current market. According, according to one report, home buyers are taking notice of mortgage rates dropping. Freddie Mac reported that the average 30-year fixed is now at nearly 6.5%, down from the peak of 7% just four weeks ago. Other positive signs for the housing market include price growth and inflation leveling off. As a result, Redfin says its home buyer demand index is up one and a half percent. But Redfin Deputy Chief Economist Taylor Marr says we're not out of the woods just yet. And key indicators for home buying demand are teetering on a knife's edge. Sellers are having a different reaction with a record number pulling their houses off the market. Redfin says two percent of the homes for sale in November were delisted. Some sellers were likely hoping to cash in on the competitive market we saw earlier this year, only to be disappointed. According to Redfin, fewer sellers are seeing multiple bids, and some aren't seeing any offers at all. As long as homeowners are waiting to offer their homes for sale, buyers will need to wait for rates to keep falling to get help on affordability. Coming up, Atlanta Mortgage already has a buyer as it closes up shop. Don't miss the largest regional mortgage show in the nation. The New England Mortgage Expo returns to Mohegan Sun in Connecticut, January 12th and 13th. See us at www.anymortgageexpo.com. Start your year with the best connections in the industry. Dozens of sessions, scores of exhibitors. It's where success is written every hour. www.anymortgageexpo.com. Welcome back. When Atlanta Mortgage announced plans to close, it said the timeline was based on finding a buyer for its assets. Well, it didn't take long. 
Just one day later, Guild says it's buying the Wisconsin-based independent mortgage lender. Atlanta has branches in 27 states, and Guild says this will help them grow in both new and existing markets. Guild CEO Mary Ann McGarry also says Atlanta is a good fit with her company's culture. Atlanta notified Wisconsin's Labor Department of the closure on Wednesday, as well as the layoff of 62 employees. The two companies did not disclose the terms of the deal or say what will happen to those employees. They also did not lay out a timeline for the deal's completion. Atlanta told Wisconsin officials it plans to close up shop by April. We'll be right back with what else is interesting today. Welcome back. Here's what else is interesting today. President Biden's college debt forgiveness plan remains on hold, and it could be a while before we learn whether the plan will move forward. The U.S. Supreme Court will take up the case hearing arguments in February, but a decision isn't expected until June. Biden wants to forgive up to $10,000 of student debt for many borrowers and $20,000 for those who got Pell Grants. According to the reports, 26 million people have already applied for forgiveness. But the plan is on hold after rulings in two appellate courts. In the meantime, people with outstanding debt will continue to have temporary relief because the White House extended its pause on repayments. That break was set to expire at the end of the year, but will now continue until 60 days after Biden's relief program is put into place or the Supreme Court makes its ruling. For more on these and all of today's top stories, go to MortgageNewsNetwork.com.